Tandy was selling two inch wide uh, leather straps on Amazon for 17 bucks, which is a pretty good price. And since I already had a buckle on hand and some 38 caliber cartridge loops that I had sewn onto leather strips, I thought I would go ahead and, and uh, make a cartridge belt for the Texas Trail Gun. And as you can see, it's a pretty thick leather strap here. Again, two inches wide. The strap is 50 inches long. I believe they also come in 72 inch lengths if you need something a little longer here. And I want to start with the basics. The color, of course, is leather dye, black leather dye. And it's finished with a black acrylic resolin. Now, usually the acrylic resolins you see for leather are clear. But I discovered that you can get a black resolin that's tinted uh, kind of almost like a black wash. And so it provides a pretty good finish once the leather dye is, is set for a few days. The only trick to the black resolin that I found over the clear is that when you do the finish side, you want to do it with a soft cloth and wipe it on, make sure there are not any bubbles. The clear resolin, if you get any bubbles, they tend to kind of uh, go away. This does not, so make sure that if you use the black resolin, that you put it on with a soft cloth. On the finish side, I used an old tube sock. Now, when you do the rough side, it just soaks right in, no bubbles, and if there are, I don't think you're gonna care, but, but again, the smooth side, watch out for the bubbles, but it's a good product, and it really adds an, almost like a second dye coat in black um, to the leather. Now, you can see here the buckle end. I just folded the end with the hole punched in it, um, notched it out for the buckle, and this is done very simply by punching a hole on each end of the rectangle with a hole, with a hole punch, the leather punch, and then using a steel ruler and an X-Acto knife, just making the rectangle from hole to hole. That's the easiest way I've found to uh, put these in. Punched a couple holes, put in a couple Chicago screws. Now moving on to these cartridge loops. Again, these ones I had previously made, and I had stitch them to a piece of thick piece of leather and this of course is is sewn onto uh, the leather strap the belt and I like these because they're not rubbing up against the belt they're easier to get out I think because they are not rubbing up against the belt it's just personal preference now as I was stitching this uh, this on, I also used some leather glue to kind of give it a finished edge on there, no gaps or anything like that. And you'll see that these are notched out because these cartridges are 38 short Colt. They live up to their name, they're short. Now these would normally uh, be good for 38 special or 38 long Colt, but in order to use the 38 short Colt, which is my preferred round in the Texas Trail Gun, um, had to notch them out so that you could get them out. Otherwise, the leather would cover the end and it would be harder to push these out. If I were making these from scratch specifically for 38 short Colt, I would have just cut them back here. But I think the notching out works pretty well. Um, these were originally in brown. I refinished them in black with the, the black leather dye. And while that was drying, I put some spent brass in each one. And then after it had dried a few days, put the black resolin on it, let it sit for a few days, came out in a very nice finish. Now for the holster, um, if you have not seen my other rig video for the Texas Trail Gun, this holster was made using a pattern from the Tandy Percussion Pistol Pattern Pack which is a set of patterns that you can download from Leathercraft Library. I think the whole pack is about $10. And that pack comes with patterns for several uh, percussion or cap and ball era uh, revolvers. There are two uh, Navy patterns in that pack. This is one of them. And it's a pretty, pretty good looking holster, I think. It's not something you're going to see everywhere. And just a couple of quick notes on that. Uh, this pattern. Um, the pattern has two different bands, this buckle one and then there's like a, a dual dog or a dog bone where the ends of the dog bone kind of 
are real tight and then they have holes punched on them and you leather lace it. So if you want something a little snug, a little less flashy, again there's a second uh, band in that pack. Um, has kind of a unique hammer thong. You can see kind of slides through, it punches through here. You're not going to see that on every every holster either. And they're made to have a leg tie down. I don't particularly like leg tie down, so I just kind of tied it here so it's secured. Now, when I had put these brass buttons on here, they were for that other belt, which is a little narrower, an inch and three quarter. And the reason I put these brass buttons on here was basically to lock the belt in because you can see there's a big gap here. So and keep the whole holster from riding up when you draw the gun, I had to put these brass buttons in here. And this one, you can see, is set kind of far in. And the reason this is set uh, so far in is to kind of push the grip of the gun a little bit away from the body, give your hand a little more room when you draw the gun. And since that was set for a slightly narrower belt, inch and three quarter, and this is two inch wide, once I was sure where I wanted the holster, you can see I cut a notch in the top of the belt. So now this thing is pretty much locked in here. It doesn't slide around all over the place. Okay, here's the other uh, brass button. And again, um, keeps it locked on fairly well. It's not sliding around quite as much as it would otherwise. Um, I just want to take a moment here to talk about the screws on these Colt clones. They've all got about a dozen screws. Navy's uh, single action army uh, clones, the Italian clones. So if you're going to um, get into these guns, one thing you're going to want to look at is to get yourself a set of full-size Peacemaker screwdrivers. I've got a set of nice wood handle screwdrivers I think I found on um, Midway USA for about 25 bucks. And that's great when you're at home, you're cleaning the gun, or you're, you're wanting to uh, tighten it up and check it but what do you do when you're at the range or something maybe you've got a bag with you that has screwdrivers in it maybe not and what I've seen on some of the competition holsters is, is they'll have an actual pocket sewn in somewhere where they put a small screwdriver tool it's a good idea I haven't I haven't um, gotten one of those yet but what I do have is this little stamped screwdriver tool that came with the gun works all right um, in a pinch you just have to be careful that you don't mar up the screws or scratch up the gun when you're using this, but it does work. And I've been messing around trying to figure out the best way to secure this just so it goes along with the rig and doesn't get lost. I don't know, loop it around or put the rig on, stuff it in your pocket or something. I'm still monkeying with that. I may just pick up one of those little screwdrivers and put a pocket on this holster, but there it is. Now moving on, we've got another set of 10 cartridge loops here, you can see. And then we finish off with the end here, again narrowed down to an inch and a half. Now one note on the end here, in order to keep this from getting frayed, what I did was is I coated it with this uh, brown edge coat. And it dries kind of in a rubbery consistency. It's for four pants belts so that when you're putting the belt on and off, it doesn't fray. And once it let it dry overnight, just dyed it, clear coated it. So it'll keep that from over time. Uh, should keep it from fraying. And then we have the belt on. You can see the holster back here. I like these between the three and four o'clock position. That in combination with having a 42 inch waist gives me the ability to put uh, a few more cartridge loops on here than maybe the thinner folks might be able to do. And that way I can keep these small 38 short Colt cartridges up front where they're a little easier to, to pull out of the loops. And of course, if you have a smaller waist, um, you could cut these back to five or six or just eliminate them all together, go on this side. Um, you go all the way around it, you may find it more challenging to get those shorter cartridges out of the back. Um, if you're using longer cartridges, 38 Long Colt, 38 Special, and so on, not so much. But there, I just wanted to give you a view of how this looks while it's on.